Everybody, this is Brittany from Teach Me ABA, and today we're going to continue on our Task List 5 series for those studying for the exam or for anyone that's just curious about a lot of our aspects within ABA therapy and services. So for this video, we're going to talk about C-3. So this is measuring occurrences of behaviors, and we're getting specifically into count, frequency, rate, and percentage. As I mentioned in C-2, if you haven't watched it, I would go ahead and just go back so that you have a little bit more information, uh, especially on the fundamentals of measuring behaviors for the purpose of uh, intervention implementation. So measurement of behaviors is important because it provides us with a quantifiable account of how often behaviors are occurring in their environment. So once a clinician has a reliable, predictable measure um, of this behavior that's going to occur, that just makes it more possible to prevent that behavior. Now, this is important when discussing behaviors that are not compatible with overall growth of an individual, such as self-injurious behavior or what's called SIB. This data can also provide clinicians with proof that an intervention is effective by observing the changes seen in a graph. So let's say that we have the same graph of SIB, where we have an increase when we start with this particular behavior, and then over time we see a decrease once the intervention is implemented. In ABA, there are three measurable dimensions of behavior, because behaviors have different dimensional qualities to them, based on either repeatability, temporal extent, or temporal locus. For the purpose of focusing on C-3, I'm just going to be discussing measures based on repeatability. So those are count, frequency, rate, and percentage. So let's dive in. Repeatability as a dimensional quantity can, and you guessed it, be used for behaviors that occur repeatedly through time. It's just that simple. So count is also described as frequency, where essentially this is just measuring every instance of a behavior that has occurred. For example, let's say that we're targeting the frequency of tantrums. If we have a client that's engaged in four tantrums during a session, then we can say that the frequency of tantrums is four. Now, while this measurement is useful for counting every instance of behavior, it is not suggested to be used on its own. So let's move on to rate. Rate is the number of responses across the span of time, and it should be used when the target behavior has an observed start and end. They are called free operant behaviors. Now, you wouldn't use rate for behaviors that can last for long amounts of time. So we'll be discussing duration and measures based on temporal extent as we move on from this video. Now, you wouldn't use rate uh, when behavior is also limiting um, and only occurring in restricted settings. Now, typically rate is disclosed as responses per minute, hour, or day. Let's say we wanted to record instances of mouthing, and mouthing is going to be termed as when an individual puts their fingers into their mouth across a span of 30 minutes. Now, this 30 minute observation is going to be important because we can find the average of mouthing instances within that 30 minutes. We would use rate as a measure. So rate will be useful for behaviors that occur frequently enough that you'd like to see its patterns across different days or across consecutive sessions. So traditionally, we would count all of the instances of mouthing and then divide that by the 30 minutes per my example. And then this gives us an average mouthing instance per minute. Now finally, we have percentages. Now these are a ratio of responses that have occurred um, in a particular way. So the ratio of responses can be divided by the total number of opportunities for the behavior to occur, and then this is multiplied by 100. This is used predominantly um, in ABA to calculate the number of correct responses that an individual provides us. So for example, let's say that we have a trial of 10 uh, for a particular target that we're trying to teach an individual. And let's say they got seven correct. So the seven is divided by the 10, which comes out to 0.70. And then you multiply that by 100 and you get 70% of correct responses that that individual gave us. Now, I hope for a lot of you that are like me and are a little bit aversive to math, I haven't gone into too much detail that gets a little bit confusing. But of course, if you have any questions or comments, please leave them below. If not, please like, subscribe, and share. And once again, I wish you all the best of luck in your studying endeavors. Please keep an eye out for our next video vlog.